So, back at the bench, and I would like to be have a little bit more room for whatever I'm doing here. So let me go and try to get that to extend a little bit. Let's see, how do I want to do this? Uh... Hey, what's up, Pada? Nothing much, just, uh... I got a task today from my wife that she needs a new night guard for when she's sleeping. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for a good bit is uh, trying to make a night guard so that she doesn't, uh, doesn't have any pain when she closes down at night or anything like that. So that's kind of my task for now. Hopefully it doesn't take too long, but um, it usually doesn't. But we're just gonna kind of walk through that whole situation on here. Hmm. How are you doing? How's class been? Where the hell's my pencil at? Which one of my which one of my little lab techs stole my pencil? Oh there it is. Cool. Just in case I need it. Um what else? Oh, that would also probably help if I have some light. Holy hell that's bright. But that makes everything a lot easier to see. Cool. Man, it's so bright in here. Um what did I want to do from here? I think I need to look for the lower teeth that they have and I wanted to do something special. Uh, didn't I throw away everything? I may have. Let me check the box that I have here. Uh, no, that feels pretty heavy. Oh yeah, I saved a lot in here. Um, Let's see. These look familiar, but I'm not sure if that's it. So let me see what I got going on first. I need to go and cross check my patient's mouth to make sure that this is actually them. So this is not my patient today. Let me see if I have another one here. This is not her either because it doesn't have any of those issues. I know I have a leftover impression for this one, so I can make a new one because this is kind of not the best. 
right now. This may be it, but this this may be it, but this person's missing uh, this person's missing a tooth on their upper left. They're missing 15. And not there, which doesn't match this one at all. So that's, that's not their impression. And then... That's not one. I may need to take a new impression for this person. Who's this? No. Okay. We'll work with what we got here. And then we'll uh, move on from there. Alright. So... With these teeth, they don't seem to be that badly in shape, but because this is a pretty old model that I made for this patient, I need to go and repair a couple places on it before I go and super jump into trying to fix everything. Another thing I want to do is I want to go and fix my denture brush that I have here because my other little lab techs put a bunch of wax on here so I need to fix that one a little bit too. It'd be nice to have a fan going in here. What can I take off to make the fan go? It is hot. Oh cool. Well that's good that they're that's good that they're handing out some stuff to keep everyone happy. And to get everyone in. That's right. That's right. You said that uh, we were talking about that the other day. That they had a couple new costumes and stuff too. Mm. That fan. That fan feels really nice right there. Good stuff. All right. So what I need to do with this. I need to boil out. I need to get some water to boil the wax off of this. And that shouldn't take too long to boil. Let me go and fill it with water. Yeah, I need new water with this. Just a moment. That should be able to last long enough without power to be able to stay good. Pull that off to the side and okay, I have this little spot so I'm going to use some block out resin. To fix that, which this is super washed out when that light is on. What can I do? What can I do to bring that down? Oh, I guess I can do some settings on here. Of course, that one's not supported. Um, if I set this to custom, I oh know. If I set this to manual, there you go. I can bring that down a little bit. So things are, things stay in focus and doesn't wash out too much. That'll be good.
What other breaks do I have in this? Uh, let's see, it was mainly that one. I might have that little small point right there. I think that should be good. Let's go and hit that with the light cure then. Don't worry, this isn't going to hurt your eyes. Alright, let's do this one over here. Should be good. My other piece over here should be almost near boiling. And, and off the, wa the wax falls. That pretty much clears that up pretty quick. So, now we got some of these holes patched, let's go ahead and move over to my next portion, which is going to be getting ready for my thermal suck down, so that we can go and make the next part of the piece. I have water in here, I'm just going to put this over here off to the side for now, because I don't need anything boiling. So now, let's go from here to actually sizing up what I want to use. And what I want to use is a 080 uh, material here. And this is decent size for a mouth guard. Now with this material, even though it seems like it is uh, blue naturally and such, it actually has a film over it that we can go and remove. If I can find the seam, come on seam, where are you at? And we got our nice clear mouth guard. Pretty neat. Now with that, I gotta go move over to my next little section, which I'm going to go and get set up here in a second. I don't need these pieces at the moment either. Are these pretty much clean? I think they are. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, let's get this. I don't need wax. Pull that off to the side. Get that off and over. And with that, we can bring over this sucker. And because this one's going to be the main instrument of, of usage here, let me go and set this up a little bit lower. Pick that up just a wee bit. Let me hit 
hit this with a transform vertical flip. That sounds about right. All right. Now we're to our suck down machine. All right. Make sure it's nice and clean. No major debris. Go and lay this flat. down a little bit. Cool. Yeah, that pretty much shows everything that's going to go on here. All right, so we got our unit. First I'm going to do is take on this portion and throw this on. That's going to start up a healing, a heating element that lies right here at the top. And as that heats up, it's going to heat up this thermal plastic that's nice and rubbery. It's going to make it droop. And then I'm going to go and slam it down onto my cast. And we will get started on making that night guard. But in the meantime, all we do is wait. Well, this gets heated up, which it is heating. Good. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of sagging, a little bit of melting of my material, which is good. Right now it's kind of just waving. And from here, I'm going to be dropping this pretty soon. And then it's going to get loud, which I will go and hit this part when that does happen.
now that I have that done, I can go and have my fan pointed directly at this while this cools and everything. Let that cool down and then we're going to move back over to the bench, get it cut, get it grinded, get it smooth, have my patient test it out. So at that point, I can go ahead and move back to my bench setting, like I usually do. Sitting that back over here, have that off to the side. Come back to this cast. With that, we got our piece. That'll be a denture I need to keep on working on a little bit more. That goes back over there. And I need a a scissor to do it like I not like I usually do, which means I need one of my other tools here. Which one is it? Or I should say, where is it? Oh, you're all good. So, uh, sorry, I missed your message, probably however long it was ago. Uh, this machine, oh, I forgot to update this, too. Why am I so bad? I always forget this stuff. That's why I didn't see it automatically. Um, so, this machine that I had over here a moment ago is called a vacuum former. And so, it has a vacuum all the way at the bottom, and is it as it tries to pull air into there, once we have this material, which is plastic, and we melt it really good, it'll go and it'll go and melt a little bit, and it will fall, and I'll go and push it down onto this model, and then it's going to suction around and make a mouth guard. Now I know this one doesn't have that great of focus when I do stuff like this, and it's also super bright. Actually, if I turn this off, it might make it a little bit nicer. But now I got a nice mold of my of my uh, model, my little plaster model. So I'm just going to go and rip this off and cut it so it matches the teeth a little bit better. But that's called a vacuum former. It's nothing too special, though. So with that, now we just got to go and cut this away a little bit. Cool. 
So now this is just all garbage. And now I'm specifically just working on the part that's right here on the mold. Now because I want to kind of take advantage that it's already on here, I can make some lines on here to guide me as I cut. And I can do a couple different cuts, like a wavy cut that goes in and out of the teeth, or I can do a straight, uh, straight across the gums cut. And so, let me see if I can mark it just a little bit. So I have a guide later. But usually the safest version to start off with is going to be a across the gums cut. So I'll just do a gentle marking. And if it bothers the patient at that point, then we can uh, always cut it back if we need to. And that's usually for the front side. On the back side, we're gonna have to do a little bit of a different cut too, where it's just always going to be straight across. But some people do scalloped or waved at some parts. And so now with this, I can go ahead and kind of forcefully remove this from the model, but you might end up just tearing it or uh, misshaping it uh, and prematurely. So I'm just gonna go and make a cut right here in the back so I have a little bit of relief because nothing's going on right back here. This is the palette and nothing goes on the palette unless you're making a denture. And to be a little tight. Once I relieve it from this little area, I'll have tons of room to go and peel this off from the side. Same thing over here. Let's go cut that side. And from that point, I can just go and peel this off a little bit nicer. And good if it doesn't break the model so I can reuse the model again if I need to. But I have my markings on this. It resembles my, um, my plaster model that I have here. So now I can start making cuts across and doing those fun things. And some people will use like a hot knife to be able to go and just clean, just burn across. But you can also use, uh, you can also use uh, different types of scissors to be able to do the same thing. Even regular house scissors will do for this action. And so, like I mentioned, I'm gonna start by cutting across from the tip of each tooth, so it's almost a straight line. And if I wanna cut off more later on, I can. I'll round it off on the back. Now that we're on the lingual side, the palate side, or the tongue side, I'm going to cut off just straight across from the top of every single tooth neck. Looks like a crystal skull texture. It kinda does have that a little bit. You know what's fun about the vacuum former, that machine that we were talking about earlier, is that if it fits on that plate, you can take an impression of anything. So I've taken like um, Kirby, like a Kirby figure for uh, Amiibos or whatever it's called. But I took one of those figures, did a vacuum form and essentially this type of thing, cut it all out and then I had a small little version of this and then I can fill it with chocolate and have a little chocolate version of Kirby. And so that was a fun thing I could, that I did uh, for a little bit. Another thing I did was I made chocolate teeth, like chocolate dentures. Uh, that was, no one liked seeing that, but too, too bad. I did it. And now we have this. Now right now it looks pretty, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It looks really frosty. It kind of looks too dirty. You can't even see through it or anything like that. 
So I gotta clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna go and hit some of these edges so that they're more rounded. Thankfully, because this is very rubbery, then uh, it really doesn't bother the patient too much. They might just feel um, extra little um, hairs or little uh, cuts that are in the model. And so with that, I'm gonna go and clean up some of these edges that I have here. As I go and come across, I'm just gonna round out these little spots. So that's good over there on the buckle. I'm gonna do a little bit of a cut round off on the lingual. Do the same thing over here on the other side. And right here on this other side, as I can see, because usually this ends up happening, this model has been cut or has been trimmed in a way that it made this flat part or this back part flat right in this area and right in this area. So if you leave these there, it's not going to fail on the tooth because this is not natural to this mouth and that tooth shape. So because I know that those are already there because I poured these up and trimmed them, I need to take that little back part off right over here because that matches. Same thing over here. I kind of already did it earlier, but I'm going to do it over on this one so that I can get a so I can get a good fit. And on these last teeth, you don't really need to come across. You can kind of fit the tooth to the best of your ability to make sure it doesn't feel weird. And now that I got that little piece off, we can go and inspect the other areas. Now right now, it doesn't look too bad. It's a little frosty. It looks a little, not that see-through. It's really cloudy. So I'll clean that up here in a second. But a lot of the edges on these, it has a rough feel. And so I'm gonna go and um, deburr or take off that little rough edge with some polishers or with a wheel that's going to take off the rough edges for me. So with that, I go and switch to another one of my tools. I don't need my wax pot right now, but I do need my high speed, I do need my laboratory handpiece. Don't need this, because this would be for trimming off uh, parts of my model or whatever I'm trying to do it for. But I do need this part, lock it down, and now I can spin and get that to do its action. So now I just go and take it to this model, or I take it to this, um, to this edge right here, and I'm just gonna make sure I just get the edge. It's not, uh, apart from just taking off some of the rough parts, it's also going to thin it a little bit. So it's a little bit more of an easy transition from your, uh, from your night guard to your teeth. And so as I go and spin that, I actually want to go and put on some goggles so that none of these pieces fly up in my eyes. And... and now that has a super nice smooth finish to just that edge that I have. And I'm going to go and do that all around. And I'm going to do it to the tongue side. Doesn't take too long to do. And as I go and finish up these edges of the teeth, I can go and put it back on my model and just inspect how my cuts were, how it looks now, how it feels. You always want to have a nice feel. See if there's any rough spots, any hard spots, especially if you're making one of these as a retainer, a hard plastic, then you really want to make sure that it doesn't poke anywhere because your, patient, your patients are not going to like that at all little spot right there can use a little bit of touch up all right so 
now we're in business. Let's put that back on my model. And while it's on my model, I can make some inspections and see if it fits well. For one, does it come off in one area like this when it's on, saying that something was not tilted right or melted right. But right now, if it's on, it looks like it doesn't lift at all, which is perfect. That means it's fully melted, melted to these teeth. It's fused to this model, which is good. I can go and feel at the, at the gum line and see if it picks up a little bit as I go and rub my finger on these edges. And right now, I really don't feel any big like catches, big ledges or anything like that. Little one right here that I want to take care of right behind this canine, but not too bad. Right here a little bit too. So I'm gonna go and make sure that this portion right here is just a little bit more thinned out. So it looks like I need to concentrate more on the canine on the buckle and on the lingual side, because that's where I'm feeling my catch a little bit more. Nice. A little bit on the lingual side also. It's a little bit thick there. Cool. And I can go in, reapply, and try. That feels better. Let me give this a little bit of a rinse and uh, let me give my model a little bit of a rinse so I can kind of get it to not be as cloudy. I could run it in an ultrasonic if I wanted to, to help out to, to make it look a little bit cleaner. Uh, but it doesn't take too much to just kind of buff it out, get all the loose bits out of there. And thankfully because it is made of plastic, you can kind of just really put a grind to it as you go and just kind of buff it out a little bit. Another thing that I can do, which I probably will, is I'll take it to my dental lathe and I'll go and uh, shine it. I'll put a little bit of high shine on there to really make it look crystal clear. A little bit of pumice, a little bit of high shine will make it look really nice. And it doesn't take too long, it takes a couple of, uh, just a couple of passes and it'll look really pretty but not bad, not too bad, cleaned up just a little bit. If I was to put some mineral oil inside of this, it'd really make it look glossy, but I'm just gonna put it on the model just for now. Go and kind of clean up my little area for now. Don't need that anymore. I don't need my scissors anymore. I can back up the image a little bit. Cool. And for the most part, I believe I'm done with this, but I need to polish it, like I mentioned. So, I don't need my glasses anymore. Pretty safe, nothing's gonna fly up into my eyes anytime soon, which is cool. Now that I have my set, let's go ahead and uh, let me prep my lathe, which is like two feet in that direction, and then we'll get a nice little polish. That will take like a couple of seconds. And then I can go and prepare the or then I can go show that off to my patient and then I'll start working on a little bit on this denture that I've been working on for for on and off for a little bit. So let me get this prepped and lap stuff. Let's see, I can go and ooh, this is gonna this is gonna be a bit of a lift. I need to get a little mobile, a small little rag wheel. Ugh. Man, that's a beefer. Cool. Now I got my rag wheel, or now that I got my uh, lathe in place, let's go ahead and find the rag wheel that I want to use, which is going to be here. 
And then if I go and get my model, I could shine it on this uh, cast. It'll actually make it a lot easier to go and hold it as I go and turn it around. Um, so that's gonna be a nice nicety for that. I need to go and make sure my, la my lathe is hooked up. So where is my, here you are. There's my lathe. I can go and take this out. And let's go into that. And let's turn it on. A lot of flying pieces uh, on there. But I need a little bit of water. And with that water on there, go use a little bit of my polisher. A lot of hairs flying everywhere. And then let me go and just hit it with a little bit of shine. All right, and that's pretty much it. I go and get this out of here. Let that spin till it goes and falls off. And I can de-lathe and I can put my fan back on because it is crispy in here. Uh, let's see, you said, let's see what you said. Man, sometimes in my room I hear something like a moan. The worst thing I hear is, the worst thing is that I hear it next to my ear. That ain't, t that ain't cool. But, if you need to go and t tell it to go somewhere else, tell it to come over to me. Definitely, I will take care of it. Send that spirit over here or make it watch the stream. We will enjoy its company with us here. Cool. But that is pretty disturbing though. I don't think it's cool to have a spirit in your room, and the cool thing is that it also that it's also learning live. Damn it, the spirit is learning. That's the that's the heart. That's the worst part of it all, and not just that, it's learning for free too. So it's a freeloading spirit. It's all right. Even spirits need uh, dental work also. So I feel that it's okay. That was actually a video that I'm going to, that I have an idea for is, um, is making a commercial for a, um, essentially like a monster like dentist office. So I already have it scripted out. I just have to kind of film it and, um, I just need to film it. I need to get certain people to act certain parts and I need a lot of costumes. Wait, wait, uh, waits for spirit. What language does it understand? What language does it understand? That is also very true. That is a good question. What is, what is their, what is their first language? I don't know. 
But we gotta help them out. We gotta help them cross over. Alright. I think this is ready for my patient. So I'm gonna go and hand this off to them in a moment, uh, for a moment. See if, it, see if they can wear it, see if there's any issues with it. Then I'll be back. And we're gonna work on denture here. They are bilingual spirits because age is wisdom, and if you have been dead for many years, you're already wise. <laughs> you're too funny. We are back. One second. to the lab again. Alright, let's see. But you're right, that spirit is bilingual. And they are learning always, all the time. They're watching everyone, there's right there watching you, watching other people's streams. Let's see, I wanted to work on this a little bit more. Because I feel like it's almost to the point where I'm ready to set it up for the next stage, but let's see, uh, where's my tools? I know I had, I know I had a set that I wanted next to me. There it is. take off here. I don't need my lathe. I don't need my vacuum former. I can put back my wax pot here. What do I have here? Vacuum. I don't need that. What the hell is this? There's my wax pot. There it is. I need to get more plugs. I need to get more plugs to be able to plug in my things. A little bit easier. All right, so I'll put that over here. I just need a small little bit. I think I want to hit this with fire, but I don't want to use my main torch. Let me go and use my alcohol torch that I have. Do I have any more? I need to get some more. I think I have just enough to do what I want to do here.
come out of that. Need to get some more denatured alcohol. But now that I got that running. Oh, clean this one up a little, up a little bit. That looks nicer. Let's do some to the back too. Burn my finger on that one.
but all right. I like this side, showing more tooth than gum. The previous version I had was just too gummy in its smile. And so I think I found a nice little happy medium for these ones. Maybe a little bit more tooth for this central. Yeah, that's about what I want. And so that's good. Now we have a little bit more a little bit more longer in the tooth, so this whole left side of the patient's mouth has been more altered to show more tooth rather than this side, which is a lot more gummier. So I gotta transfer a lot of what I got over here over to this side and continue on. Which let's start with the central and let's match it to be right about there so so if I go and shoop and then I don't want it to feel lopsided this tooth is kind of lopped already I can move on to this one which will be do -ka -do -ka -do, right about there rounded out there a slight bit lower than the central which is good just a hair and then we're gonna go a lot lower a lot longer over here in the canine which should be right about there or so Just start matching the next door, or all the way over there is canine, little by little. Okay. Just about. I can probably go a little bit higher, but let me go and feather out what we got going on over here. Continuing on over here to the premolar, tooth number five. I went a little bit too high right there, but we'll fix it in. I'll add some wax later and fix that up a little bit. Let's see how far we can go. This tooth has a little bit of rotation on it, or not rotation, this one has a lot of lean to it. So I need to go and shift that back into place in not too long. Both of these actually have pretty good lean. I think that's probably what I have going on in this cast over here to make it match. So I'll double check that not too long. And then let's clean out some more off of this molar. And let's raise the gum line a little bit more. I think if I remember right, I had to cut down a lot of the neck of the tooth on this one to make it fit in this arch. So that might not be something I can super creep up on this tooth to show, ne uh, to show the cervical or the neckline of it. I can go in feather. I can feather here, or taper, you can use that word. Good, good, good. All right, go back over here. And let's go back to my boy at. All right, cool. Let's go and push these gum tissues up a little bit. Heat that up for a quick second. And that works fast.
me go ahead and flash this a little bit. Ben, shut your Ben, shut your mouth. You know what a wash impression is. I know you know, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, Lab was asking for one the other day, and I was clueless. A wash. Okay, hold on. So. A wash, just the term wash, just means using the light body. So if you're using a light body impression material, so pretty much what the doctor is squirting on the tooth, that's what they're asking for. Now, the, mo the only reason why I think they would be asking for a wash impression is because they want a super detailed, fine impression of the margin of the tooth. But you guys already do that. You do wash or light body, and then you do tray material or heavy body and you just exchange the guns right what were they on it what were they on about unless they wanted a bite registration which i figured you guys would be sending bite registrations the what's a wash impression the doc the lab was asking for the one of the day if i was your guys's lab i would never ask for a wash impression just saying What was the case? Like, like, was it just a crown prep? And it was just like, oh, send us a wash impression so that we can get a better detail of your blah, blah, blah. But if it, was, if it wasn't a crown case, usually if you're sending a, if it's for, if it's for like a denture or something like that, then they're, I don't know, usually we make impression, we usually we make all of our stuff off of a, off of an alginate most of the time. Full denture try-in. I don't know what they were smoking then. A wash impression, really? Lab sent it with the dentures. Are you sure they didn't want like a custom tray? Then at that point, maybe they wanted a cust. Maybe they sent a custom tray with you, and they're saying, "Hey, give us a wash impression." Because if they send you a custom tray, they just want you to put wash inside of there so you can catch details. And then when you take an impression with that custom tray, it's going to not be that much material, but it's going to capture a lot of the, the stuff that they want to see more detail on. Was it, I'm pretty sure it's the, I'm pretty sure it's the lab that's over there, not too far from where you guys are at. A couple, like a town or two over. Yeah, I'm pretty sure what they wanted was a custom tray. Now that I'm thinking about it, which usually the usually that's usually mainly dictated by the dentist if they wanted a custom tray that they would do that. They're in Tracy, I believe. Yeah, that's still not too far away in either direction. If you just either go to Tracy or you go to Lathrop, but odd. I mean, they're just being good about making a really detailed uh, detailed denture, but. Pfft. It'd be nice to, uh, some, you know what it is sometimes too, especially when I, uh, especially when I'm in my little groups and everything like that. Some places when they get a really crappy impression, they're just like, you know what, don't even deal with it. Send them a custom tray based on whatever they sent us and just tell them to, tell them to provide a, um, a better impression. So... It, it might just be the lab's just roundabout way of saying someone's taking a bad impression over there or might not even be taking a bad impression. The doc is approving a not that great impression and sending it off to the lab and having us do magic. So definitely that could be a thing. That's why I would guess in, in this case, but I mean, who knows? Shoot. I wish I had a custom tray. I wish I had a wash impression. 
Yeah, I know. My wands are all all spread out across this table and everything like that. But like even even this even this cast that I got right here, like it's it's like bubbles were everywhere. It wasn't poured up that great. I, I'm, I want more vegetable and I would love to get more and everything but for these first first couple steps and everything like that I'm just gonna make it work for the most part I'll make it work and by the time that it gets to the wax trying or whatever if Doc has an issue with it then we will tackle it when that issue comes about until until I get something that's just unusable I'm just gonna kind of keep Keep trekking on the best that I can. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah. But good hearing you, or good seeing you again, and everything. I know you were asking about it uh, not not too long ago if I was gonna go live, and I think I did go live that night. But I think I was on like super late. I think I got on at like 10:30 or something like that. Which is which for. For an office that's open seven days a week, um, <laughs> you're pretty much at risk of working any of those days. I need to set my notifications too. Oh, that's true. I, I, I always forget about that. I need, to, I need to have like little reminders for things like that be like hey hit the notification bell or hit it twice and set it so that you get notified when I go live or new videos are posted I'm just too I'm just terrible at doing that or at advertising that I don't I hate getting bothered during videos to do things like that like and subscribe so I just don't do it myself but I probably should because there's really no no unbent or there's really no bad thing to it but this bite wing video that I made not too long ago I made a uh, I made a bite wing video not too long ago and that thing's actually kind of climbing pretty quickly like within just even the last week or so I've seen it just constantly growing in numbers it's not super far up there but for like my videos and how they usually track and how they grow my bite wing videos doing pretty good and I'm super stoked about that because um, I think I threw that video together in like a weekend and I was like yeah this will, this will work yeah it's alright yeah this yeah this video is gaining like a hundred to two hundred uh, views a day which is awesome for me that's just so Great. But hopefully all the other people are doing, uh, hopefully yourself and all the other uh, students over there that I know are doing just fine. I know soon we're going to be having a open house or a um, like a program meeting. I think I saw three bite wings videos today. <laughs> it's a hot dental topic. Most new people are having issues with them. I can totally see that, and it's a uh, it can be tough, especially unless you have it like right there in front of you to actually put the techniques that you're learning to use. I mean, that's the main thing. Is just. Can I have a x-ray unit right there in front of me so I can practice exactly what they said right then and there? And a lot of times we don't, unless you're me and I have a portable x-ray unit and uh, I can do that out. And I got like dummy heads to be able to practice on too, so, you know, just me being a weirdo and everything. How they started working on that second level. I know that I know that place works pretty pretty quick once they're set their uh, their sights on something to do. Always need more practice. Yeah, 
Everyone usually does. I mean, shoot. Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it's the person. Sometimes it's just the equipment that you have that you have to use and everything like that. Like some of these uh, some of these uh, X-ray sensors that are out there are super whack. Where it's like, oh, the X-ray sensor is like the X-ray sensor is like this big. But your only usable area that teeth will show up on is like this big. So you have super big uh, bezels on the outside that don't do anything but take up space. Like if I was to get, if I was to get, try to take an x-ray right there, I'll probably get like a molar, which is fine and dandy. I'll probably get another molar in here and then I'll get one premolar and then I'm missing the other thing. If only I had this extra space over here on this side to be able to use, I can probably get my other premolar and just call it a day. But manufacturers make it all stupid and the only usable area is the center square. And we have all this extra room on the outside. We, get, uh, we kicked out hygiene to pedo, the, uh, uh, always need more practice. We kicked out hygiene to pedo the other day. I definitely prefer the x-ray rooms. Is the x-ray, oh, so it's like you take your patient over to that x-ray room, do x-rays, and then you'll take them over to the treatment room or your operatory that you're going to use. I can see that being, uh, that's usually most com uh, the most common practice is to do it just like that. I like having the little nomads, the little portable x-ray units. Those tend to be pretty fun. Um, but also um, just having just x-ray heads in the room. I don't need that flame anymore. Those are always nice to just be able to have also. But it's just more expensive that way. I know I know their song and dance. I've lived it. Oh yeah, you kind of missed it. I sh I sent you a picture of my little uh my little tooth ring that I had and everything like that. But yeah, I uh, made this probably like this past weekend. I think I made it, I think I finished it on Friday. And man, a lot of times I forget that I have it on because I pretty much made it fit my hand. I love this thing. I wanna make more, I wanna make a master model so I can kind of make more of them and just kind of have some custom uh, ring sizes that I can, uh, put for um, any other people. I got all four posterior PA shots in one shot. Oh, look at that. Some rooms just have better models and uh, they're easier to work with. Oh, so you're saying like the, um, like you prefer certain x-ray tube heads or certain sensors? I can see that. Especially if, uh, especially if you have a lot of different sensors, I can definitely see that being a having a preferable, uh, preferred thing. Like I used to work with uh, DEXA sensors, I used to work with Gendex sensors, and I definitely preferred one over the other. And even sometimes just like the direction that the wire is facing because not all of them just come straight out the back. Some of them will come out at like a little bit of an angle and that makes it easier to be able to grab on with your snap array sometimes. Yeah, I can tell they didn't buy them all at one time. Yeah, uh, what you were saying and all that. Yep, usually uh, that's the pains of uh, of the office. Let's just get one. Let's test it out. If it's crappy, we'll just keep using it and we'll buy another one and test out and see if that one works well. That's awesome. It's good that you're doing well over there. And hopefully you keep on doing well, and I see you going over there and managing it one of these days. You just gotta get your RDA to start. Which you're probably, which more than likely you're on track for that.
No doubt. Yeah, that's right. Remember, you gotta be, you gotta beat out those other punks that are in the that are over there. Gotta show them what, who's boss. This way on the board, yeah. It shouldn't. It, it, they've been going pretty quick this whole year, so I can imagine that it won't be too long before you get uh before you get a hit. But just keep on making sure that you check your your mailbox because that's where it's gonna go. It ain't gonna go anywhere else but there. So just be definitely ready for it as that uh as that comes but i mean just even just of recently i think of probably the last like 10 people that went and took it i think hold on even even just like a number back in august we had i think 18 people that took that test and 16 passed which was a super woot woot type of moment and i knew the people that didn't pass and I know the reason why they didn't pass. Um, but then we had another good amount of people that took it in this past month for September, or pretty much for this month of September. And I think so far, two of them have two of them have failed, and then like the other like eight of them have passed. So you guys are getting out there and doing well on it. Denise is starting to bug the others about getting their RDA, so I'm gonna be on it. Oh yeah, you're gonna definitely show them up. And hopefully that and hopefully she rewards you for it and gives you some extra cheddar on top of your meal for uh, for getting it and just being ready. I'm not sure if they're hard, I'm not sure if they're hiring like other RDAs in the system to kind of uh, make up for the make up for the lack of RDAs over there at that office. I don't usually see them advertise on Indeed too uh, too often either, though. But I'm never usually looking on Indeed for you guys' stuff. Hopefully it's Monterey Jack. The best. You know. It's gotta be that way. Or whatever the hell you would put on those pizzas back then. Man, you made some... You made some sexy pizzas back there. That was... That was pretty good stuff. My wife... My wife was like, Damn! This is a really good pizza! I was like, I'm not sure what he did to it. He just did it. It was like, I think I remember you told us, you were like, you stepped up to the, you stepped up to the chopping block, just grabbed whatever was in front of you, threw it on there, and then just went off. We have a new RDA too, but I'm better than they are. You better be better than they are, which is awesome. And probably wherever they came from too, they weren't the they weren't as hot as um, they weren't as uh, used or utilized in that office. So um, I always want you guys to keep that in mind. You guys are all of you all of you that I got uh, to experience and uh, meet. You guys are my favorites. They say never to have favorites, but all my students, you guys are my favorites. Until my children are my students. They might, they might beat you out one day, but I doubt it. And that's also for like super far away. I doubt my kids would uh, want to join the dental field. They'll probably just do lab tech work with me. I'm getting burned by wax every single day. <clears throat> Man, this, this is actually not too far off from being finished. Which is super awesome. I'll be office manager by the time. Oh yeah. Oh heck yeah. Soon, at one point, you will be hiring me to the. You'll be hiring me once they finally used me up and threw me out. You'll be hiring me over there, giving me hell, as you should be doing. And uh, it'll be a nice, great. It'll be a nice, good relationship. have a little empty area right here that I want to fill up. This, uh, this vial is clogged, so I need to go and heat up this, which... There it goes. 
I'll be using the Miller time lab. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Even if you even if you go and uh, follow another uh, doc that's there and be like, you know what, you know what, Ben, I want you to come with me. And then you're gonna head out with them. And you'll be like, I know a guy. Definitely, you'll know a guy. And hopefully, I'll have my and hopefully I'll have this up and running a little bit more often, so that I can uh, get it to be definitely a full time thing. But I'll always love teaching. Teaching will always be my uh, my mistress when it comes to this, because it just uh, just ain't nothing like it. And weirdly enough, we have a few people in the chat room, or we have a couple people on the stream. Don't worry, y'all. If you, any of you have any questions, lob them at us. Me and Ben can handle you. Only the special cases. That's right. Only when you need some magic thrown on top of it. It's the worst patient. They threw up during the whole thing. They gagged. They only let half the impression set up before you actually were able to get it out. Those are the cases that I want. Because somehow, Miller's going to make it into something spectacular. One thing that I wanted to do for a set of dentures that, um, that I wanted to make, I want to make little keychain dentures too, so that I can just have and be also, uh, yeah, no impression at all. Just, just send, just be like, hey, I need this case to replace all the teeth. Make it happen. <laughs> You're gonna get something, all right. You'll get something. But uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make um, these neat little disturbing um, dentures that are um, glitter dentures that's what they're called they look neat I'm pretty sure they're not super strong but they're super stylish I guess in case that's the type of clientele that you're trying to aim for uh, but let me go and put this on my model I'm gonna go check and see what I have here with this patient, the issue that I'm having here is they want their bite to be end to end, which is dumb to me, but if that's the way that they want it, I can kind of make it just like so. And that will kind of handle for what I want to happen. And so I can make it kind of work like this. This tooth over here on this, uh, this last molar on this side needs, uh, some help. It actually needs to be taken out and replaced, but we'll kind of work with it and I'll replace it as, uh, when that actually gets taken out. But this isn't too bad. I need to kind of finish up the edges over here. can go and do this but yeah earlier I was making um, what's called a bleach tray or a night guard because my wife wanted one she's like hey the one that I have it's getting kind of old it's getting kind of yellow it's getting kind of smelly can you make me a new one so I was like yeah I'll actually just stream it tonight so I ended up making one earlier uh, for her and uh, that was fun haven't done that uh, haven't made uh, a bleach tray like that in a while but I need to record it. I actually need to make a video doing that. But that will come one of these times. I do want to add a little bit of wax to the edges right here like I was mentioning. So it's burning time for my fingers. So let's go ahead and wrap my little cast around as I go and dabble with some of this hot wax. Good. Yeah, send me no impressions. Expect a denture. I am your man when it comes to that. Good. I still have my impressions. You have your impressions from class still? I need to make bleach trays 
or let's see, what do you say? I still have my impressions. I need to make a bleach tray, or I want to rather. D don't you guys have uh, don't you guys have suck down machines, vacuum formers at your office? I'm pretty sure you do, but I'm also pretty sure that you're so damn busy that there's barely any time to eat your food in a closet that's over there in the back of the office or anything. And also, you're you're kind of midway far away from from the from our school so I was gonna say if you ever just have the instinct to just come on over and just make your stuff you could definitely do that um, another thing too is if you want me to make it or if you want to make it yourself you can always just be like hey here's the drop-off point in this bush at this location there's gonna be a small brown bag pick up that bag make the things put it back in that bush and then things will be there Cause I'll do bush pickups and drop offs. I ain't above that. Then I'll just get pulled over by the cops. What did you pick up? Are you a mule? Like, no, it's just a denture impression. I'm making bleach trays and mouth guards. I'm a lab tech. We will mission impossible. This case, is, or this case will self-destruct, right? It'll be something along that line. I think I'm done with this upper for the most part. Oh, I need to do the lingual. I see the fire up the lingual a little bit just to make it smooth. And then I can send this back. I can send this back for a wax try in for the upper. So I'll put this back off to the side. I'm gonna work on this lower just for a little bit. I need to, I need to fire it. That's what I need to do. Are you ready for Halloween? What's your what, what's your costume gonna be? Because if it's gonna be because if, if you're gonna be a tooth, I'll take very big offense to it. If you are. But you can be the tooth man of, uh, of your area, and I'll stick to mine. Is, is it just me, or are the impressions easier when there are teeth present? It's nice to, it's nice when the teeth are actually there when you're taking an impression because, I mean, you have something to kind of guide yourself to go up in there and everything. Um, unless you just, like, are super trying in the trays before on a, on a edentulous patient. Unless you're, like, super certain, like, okay, this is going to go in this direction. I just need to make sure I don't slip it off to the left or to the right when you're doing it. They're not too bad, but... Definitely, I rather them have a tooth or two to gu help guide me and also act as like little stops because then I'm just pushing it right up against the gums too. Not big on Halloween costs for me. I'm just a candy guy. Oh yeah, the, the the one that's in the pass out candy. I've been wanting to do that. I've been trying to kind of make that my mission is to be a candy pass out person. Um, but of course, you know, I gotta kind of play up the part. 
So I've been wanting to pass out floss, you know, to be an asshole. So that's uh, kind of what I wanted to do, but not just be a complete a-hole. So I wanted to pass out floss for one, just like little trial sizes of floss that are from a reputable brand. And, um, and then alongside of it, I think I wanted to pass out like candy floss, something along that line. So it's like, oh, go and just go and reach in there. Whatever you get, that's what you get. So it's either you get a real pack of floss or you get, uh, or you get candy floss. It's a gamble. But along that, I wanted to kind of haunt up my house a little bit to kind of scare some trick-or-treaters. But where I live, not that many people come down my, my area, so it's like, eh, if I go and set up my whole house to be spooky and everything like that, maybe I'll get... Oh, even Profi Paste would be pretty sweet. I, yeah, Profi Paste would be a, a fun one to be able to do. But if I, if I go and do my house real spooky, I'm going to get like maybe 20 trick-or-treaters the whole night. Because no one down my court, not a, I should say not a lot of people down my court is going to decorate their place. So everyone just skips our area and I'm right dead center in the middle of the whole court. So it's like, oh, there's one house down there that's doing it. But it's kind of a trek. It's a little dark. Let's not head down that alley. Or let's not head down that court. Let's go next door to one block down. So they miss out on it. Trick or treating has died out of it. It really has. That's that's the thing about it. Most people are sticking to the churches, at least in my experience. And you know what a fun one that I've been doing too lately is going to, um, yeah, trunk or treats, right? That's been a big thing that's been happening a lot. Um, another fun one that I've been, uh, that I've been loving is going to, um, going to uh, senior living facilities and uh, doing trick-or-treating, uh, doing trick-or-treat within all those little, uh, within all the elderly areas. Because they love coming around. They have, oh, look at these little kids coming around. It's their grandkids and their grandkids' friends and everything. It's fairly safe and, every, and all that. It's kind of a big old group kind of just heading around in a big old uh, orderly fashion to all the houses. It's fairly, it's pretty organized. That's what that's the type that I've actually been enjoying lately. Yeah, it's uh, been pretty nice. I've been doing it over at my grandparents' place, and it's a it's definitely pretty fun. So I'm gonna keep on enjoying that as long as I can. Um, but thankfully, no one has been uh, messing with our. With, thankfully, for the past couple of years, no one's been messing with our with our neighbor's stuff during that time. Like, we haven't gotten TP'd. I feel like that's kind of died out a lot. Maybe it's just depending on the area. But this hasn't been too many TP. I did have a couple, like, teenagers went and, like, popped, like, this guy's tires. And I feel like it was, like, super selected. Like, let's go and mess with this guy. And they went and popped all of his tires and egged the car and then ran off. I can pass out fix it in at the retirement homes. Shoot, at this point, what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to be like, hey, thank you for the candy. By the way, it looks like your denture's falling out. I can probably fix that for you. Just go and hand over the candy, hand over the denture. I don't need an impression. And let me just go and fix that up for you. Do the world some good. Add, uh, add some, uh, add some, uh, Add some karma points to my uh, to my tier list here. But another thing also that I want to do, and I've kind of talked to you guys about this before, is um, is volunteer events. There's been a lot of volunteer events that have been coming up or that have been coming back up, and um, that's something that I want to do. There's going to be quite a few. There's one over in Placerville, I think. And I think actually that is happening right now. I, I believe there's one that's happening right now for the next three days, which is Placerville. Um, there's one that's going to be up in Sacramento, but they're going to do that next year, which is super far away. But that one's really big, super nice. Uh, but if I can get my laboratory stuff kind of more up and going and more streamlined, what I want to do is I want to go to these volunteer events and offer my services to make dentures for free to people that are able to come that can actually... Um, that can actually qualify for them. 
because that is super up my alley when it comes to it. Nah, that's not brushing. That's bad for your teeth. <laughs> oh wait, it's true. Halloween is bad. It's true. Halloween is bad for children's teeth. Nah, it's not. It's not brushing. That's bad for your teeth. <laughs> Dude, I had I had actually a pretty good um, couple of people that came in yesterday that was uh, asking a good amount of questions on brushing habits and all these other things, and I, it, it felt nice being able to teach through the stream and. Um, it felt like I was on teaching duty, swing shift for the night for crew, and uh, it was neat. Really enjoyed that. So that was uh, so that was a fun thing to experience uh, yesterday when that happened. Kind of makes me hopeful for one day I can just keep on doing my uh, dental tutoring thing as a little side gig. But I've been kind of, I've been putting a little bit of um, thought into what you brought up before when we talked last was um, was doing like an RDA prep session or an RDA RDA prep stream where I can help people that are getting ready to take their RDA test. I think I'm going to start doing something along that line on Fridays. I think if I can get home on time and it's not too late. And I don't have the kids. I think I am gonna start doing something like that, where it's just like, hey, um, preparing for your dental assisting test, and kind of open it up to the public for some for something like that. And also, when it's time for you, we can go over the practice test together. Yeah, I was about to say, when it comes time that you actually get your no, your letter in the mail and everything like that, come on over. I'll help you with that. We can practice. You have. We gave you a book. God damn it, I'm yawning. We gave you a book, which definitely you can study off of that, but I also have another test that's not linked to the book at all to be able to kind of give you another version of looking at what you're going to be asked about. And uh, the last the last gal that we had uh, take the RDA test recently, she was she's pretty much kind of got had the book and the answers down for all those questions that she's been studying. And I was like, oh, you're getting like all these right. You must have studied. You must have done this quest or test over and over again. And I was like, oh, you have. So let me get you this other set of questions. It's like 250 questions. Try to do that. And if you feel stumped on some questions, go and look it up as best as you can. More practice tests, the better. Yeah. And then I, I know um, someone recently was like, oh, is there any other practice tests to be able to do? And they were like, oh, I tried using Kahoot. I tried using... Yeah, they were like, oh, I tried using Kahoot, I tried using Quizlet, I tried using all these things. And you can find decent, uh, you can find a decent um, selection of questions to get from those. Uh, but who knows if that's like a test that's for like Florida or for Washington and they have just a very, very slightly different uh, set of questions or, or allowable duties that we're able to do. So... It's kind of a crapshoot when you go uh, searching for other places and such. But hopefully I can get a good string of, oh yeah, let's go and talk about this and this concept and I can run polls live on the live on the stream where it's like, hey, if you're in the in the chat room, go ahead and type in one through four if you believe that this is the answer. Okay, a lot of you got wrong on this one, so let's go and deep dive through it why it could be. I found some answers on Quizlet could be slightly off. Use to uh, so use a caution exactly use and that's the thing I like about it is that even though they might not be specifically for California, they're still great questions. I make my own and use those exactly, and especially since like you said, you're making them on your own. You're already cementing it in your brain that you're gonna be like oh yeah I remember typing that my kid was like throwing a fit and broke a glass when they were doing that uh, when I was making this specific set of answers so I got it super down and that's just gonna be a little callback memory system that you um, that you developed and such I want to or I need to set a tooth for this lower uh. Tooth number 23, that's what I need to do. Let me go and switch this up just a little bit.
I think my kids helped me with the flashcards too. Came with the book, yeah. It made me sleepy. Oh, I'm telling you, it's uh, definitely that was a uh, that was a rough one. <laughs> I told I was like, where is the good stuff? Let me see. Uh, See if I can get something going here. One second. I gotta be at work early. Pass out early. You know why? Yeah, I feel ya. You take it easy, Ben. Thanks for stopping in and everything. Uh, also, I will hopefully see you pretty soon. On that, I wanted to work on this lower. Tuesday, twenty-three. Gosh, I'm tired. Hmm. It's gonna be way too big compared to these other teeth. It won't really match. We gotta be at work early tomorrow, so if I pass out early, you know why. Yeah. Ugh. Oh yeah, definitely. Cool that you set it up and everything like that. Um, I look forward to uh, seeing all of uh, everyone that comes here. It's always a treat. It's like talking to my buddies after I get out of work and, finishing, and I'm finished with the kids. Hmm. Let me go and trim this up a little bit. Alright, let's go and trim this. Yeah, get your rest. What's up? Don't worry, you're good. What's this? You want to make you another one? You don't want this to put it on? Or are you just going to put it in the case? Okay. I got you. I got you. No problem. So, I got my model back. Let me put this in a place.
This ain't the tooth. Found a whole different tooth that slipped out of my hands. Looks exactly like it too. Hello, nice to see you, or nice to have you in chat for Twitch the first time. Oh, I'm super zoomed in. But we are working on some teeth at the moment, as you can kind of see. If you have any questions, definitely you can go throw anything out. You can go and uh, ask any dental questions, and hopefully I have some type of answer for you. This is not the tooth that I was looking for, but it is actually the correct tooth that would have fit into this. So as far, and neat type of, uh, neat type of question that you got there and everything, as far as a school and system like that, I am just a dental assistant, or a registered dental assistant. So I know I've been doing this for about like 14 years or something like that. So I know a lot about the system and such. Uh, but for the most part, actual dental school for like an act for a uh, for a licensed dentist, that is something that is not um, something that I don't know super deep down as far as like their exact curriculum or their schooling or anything like that but for the most part i do do dental assisting and i teach dental assistants how to do their jobs and their duties and such so that's usually about my uh, expertise when it comes to stuff like that so um Hope that kind of gets something answered as far as that. But really when it comes to, especially if you're just thinking about like dental assisting, a lot of your different states, if you are here in the States, of, uh, if you are here in the States, uh, most of them will have a system of, hey, on the job trained. There are different types of schools that you can go to that make it a little bit easier to learn all this stuff before you go into the actual uh, field, but some places will just take you in and be like, hey, if you have the willingness to learn, we will teach you how to do the very basic things, and then if you want to grow from there, we'll get you certifications and classes to be able to let you do x-rays or polish teeth or do all these other different things. Uh, so that's something that kind of um, some people go through when they're trying to uh, trying to get into the system without going into school first. Is kind of learn their craft a little bit before they d deep dive in. Yep. All right. The dentist I shadowed said he'd rather have an assistant he trained and knows his stuff rather than one that was taught at the school and learned different systems. And I'll tell you this, that is a very common feeling as far as getting someone to come in and work for you is i rather you have you be a blank slate, a blank canvas that I can teach you exactly how my office runs and how I want you to learn things. 
Now that's cool and everything like that, but unless that person is soup, unless you get really lucky on that person and they really are dedicated, they're loyal to your office or to that dentist or to that company. Um, most of the time, once we kind of learn our stuff, we will just go off and do our own thing or we'll find our own office. So dentists really put a lot of work into trying to teach someone exactly what they do and hope that they stay for their whole lifetime, which uh, is unfortunate because not that many people do. Of course, qualification tells. Oh yeah, definitely. Qualifications definitely do help uh, when it comes to it. You don't sometimes in your uh, in your states and everything. You don't have to go to school, so you, that means you don't have to take out a school loan and pay that back to do all your stuff. But for the most part, it is um, it helps sometimes. But also something else that I do, if, if you go over to my other channel, which is on YouTube, I make a lot of YouTube videos about dental assistants and a lot of their duties that they're able to do. Taking impressions, taking x-rays, mixing materials, putting topomires or matrixes together to go around teeth, how to pack certain stuff, how to set together uh, syringes, all these different things that dental assistants are allowed to do. Um, I pretty much go into systems like that. And then on my off time, I stream and do random stuff like make dentures and things. So, uh, and I mainly do that to be able to help people that don't go to school to have their own option of someone that's doing a deep dive and trying to, uh, that does a little bit of a deep dive that can take the time to explain it instead of going to TikTok and learning it in 30 seconds and not have explanation behind it to kind of do that. I like Ben. Benny, what the heck are you still doing here? Go to sleep. You know where you should be. I did both. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, uh, you're too funny. That's what I wanted to work on. But yeah, I mean, shadow dentists, they will teach you a lot of stuff. They are really helpful. And if they have the time, they'll teach you everything that you need to be able to just work, be on your own and work in that office without any issues, which is, which is awesome. I've shadowed at a couple places and see the process of how to make, uh, of having to make your own molds for things and also at one that has high end tech stuff. Uh, where they can just scan. Interesting to see both processes. Yeah, and, and as far as those high-tech things, super awesome. S for the most part, I do like the high-tech things, all the scanners, even if you get into like dental laboratory things like I have going on here, the, the, printings, uh, the printing styles and everything. Those are awesome. They have some limits, but for the most part, with time, they are definitely going to replace manual work. Like it takes me right here to go and set wax and to carve out the different anatomies and everything like that. This will all be easily replaced by computers and uh, computer systems and CAD cams and all these things. But, I mean, I know that if the, my computer was to go down, if I didn't pay the subscription, if, I, if the electricity was to go out or anything like that, I can always just toss on a fire and kind of go back to this system and uh, be able to make these. Uh, but definitely uh, it's nice to have all those different views, all those different uh, versions of offices because that will definitely make you better, uh, a better assistant to be able to say, oh yeah, I've seen that before. I can I can probably learn that pretty quick and just go from there. So never stop learning. Never stop learning. You have all the opportunities to be able to learn through videos and hands-on at your offices. But it seems like you want to go into dental, which is neat that you found this channel somehow. And... Um, I would say that's cool. Do you have like a certain height that you want to get to before you stop? Do you see like, um, like, oh, I want to be a dental assistant or I want to be a dental hygienist or I want to be a dentist or even, even bigger than that, I want to be a specialist, an orthodontist, an endodontist, a periodontist, a prosthodontist. And also that teeth don't creep you out, which is also a huge plus.
I'm only in my senior year of high school right now, but I'm 90% sure I'm going to be dentist. Definitely. Shoot high, and like you've been doing, you've been dipping your toe into the water, seeing if you even like it, and you can handle the feel, which it's not too hard. The smell isn't really there. You get used to it pretty quick, but teeth are very interesting. It's exactly what I did. Back in high school, I wanted to go and uh, be a dentist, and I started off by being a dental assistant, and I learned that I can do quite a bit. And there's actually a lot of different roads and avenues to go from to do things that are fun. Like this, CAD CAM crowns appointments take a couple of hours. I can only imagine how long a full denture appointment would take, even just a partial. Oh, I know, right? I was just told you find out a bit, uh, let's see. I was told you find out about what you want to specialize in once you're working in the clinics at the dental school. Yeah, a lot of times once you get into dental school and you get to your D3, D4, which is like your dental year three or dental year four, pretty much once you've been into the system for a good bit, you start finding out or you get scouted to see, oh, I like root canals. I want to be a specialist that deals with root canals, so an endodontist. And that endodontist school may be in a different state, but that's an option to be able to go and kind of get accepted there, then do your other two to four years at that specialty school to do all that. But just remember, even though there are the specialists and everything, specialties and everything like that, as a general dentist, you're allowed to do everything. As long as you're trained well and you're competent, you can do anything that uh, any of these other dentists can do. But if you specialize, say as an example like I was talking about, you want to be an endodontist, a root canal specialist, all you are allowed to do is root canal teeth, do apicoectomies, do things that are mainly are related to just keep, uh, deadening the tooth for the most part. You can't extract teeth, you can't do crowns, you can't do fillings unless it's for a buildup after you're done with the root canal. You're limited in the things that you're able to do, but you are a specialist at what you do, and you make decent money at doing it. Uh, general practice keeps the specialties in business, just saying. And that is true. For a general practitioner, you have to have a general practicing dentist to even just get to a specialist. Because you have to be referred by a, by a generalist first to be, even go over to that office and be accepted. It's not like medical where you can kind of just... Uh, be like, oh, I want to go and get this, and just go over to their office and they take you. So it's nice to kind of know a lot of everything, and then just, then just specialize in it, but still be able to do all that other stuff. Be like, oh, I really like doing root canals, and I'm the best root canal person in this town, but I also do crowns and veneers, and I take out teeth, and I do a little bit of this and a little dance of that. So it's uh, good to have your fingers in everything if you're able to. But dang, high hopes, I like that. Big aspirations, one step at a time. Don't look at the big picture and think that you have to tackle it all at once. Baby steps. And also, it's never too late to go back to school to do something that you want to do. You can be any age and go back. All that matters is that at the end of it, you're able to call yourself what you went there for, and that's all anything, and that's all that counts. Let's see, I want to get something right about there. Or so. so I need to cut back a little bit of the base right here. Let's see. Okay, let's 
cut this down. Is that 27 or 22? You're too smart. You're too smart for your own good, Pinole. But it is uh, in this area that I'm trying to replace. I have 22 right here, so I'm trying to do tooth number 23. But I like that you're using your dental knowledge actively, even, even when you're watching some weirdo stream dental stuff. And these, and these damn teeth are, and this damn tooth, number 23, is so freaking small, I keep on rocketing it over, uh, out of my grip, then I have to go and find it. Uh, let's see what you said. Yeah, my dentist, I'm pretty sure, uh, let's see, yeah, my dentist, I'm pretty sure he is just a general dentist, but he got his anesthesiology license, or, that's right, um, and does a lot of wisdom teeth, or at least that's what it seems like. Well, I don't mean just in a bad way, of course. Oh yeah, and that, and that's the thing when it comes to uh, when it comes to that is generalists can do like a lot, like we were mentioning and everything like that. And it's awesome to be able to have that ability to just be uh, to be able to just focus on wisdom teeth or oral surgery and everything like that. And if the if that general dentist is doing it right and everything, such as um, when they go and put them under general anesthesia and they knock that patient out, hopefully they're able to do it in a way where there's monitoring systems which is pretty much state standard uh, for every place is that there's a vitals monitoring system but even as some places that they, they'll hire anesthesiologists to come and make sure that everything is is uh, taken a look at and everything's being monitored safely while they're doing the wisdom teeth extractions yeah that's what he has the people are all uh, are all hooked up yeah Exactly, they're gonna have all these different wires and everything go to go into their feet and such like that, and uh, to their arms and their feet and legs and everything. It's uh, pretty wild, and especially to watch them get knocked out. It's like, hey, breathe in this gas, count to ten. If you can reach ten, blah 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 blah, and then all of a sudden they just knock out and they start curling up like a spider that's dying because their body's trying to fight off the anesthesia and everything. So it's a it's a neat system, definitely is. Specialists get paid more though. Yeah, definitely and especially if as a specialist since you do get paid more for doing just a certain thing It's uh, it's pretty wicked. It's pretty wild For real being specialized does bring in the mole. Uh, yeah, it does bring in moolah. Oh, yeah, absolutely You just got to be certain that you're uh, you just got to be certain that you're cool doing those five procedures over and over and over and over and over again but I mean, for the dough that it brings in, psh, give it to me every day. If, if, I, if I have to go and do the same type of root canal every single day for that, or just keep pulling out wisdom teeth, which when they're knocked out, it's even easier to do, um, that's definitely up my alley. Less, uh, less uh, thinking, more just autopilot at that point when it comes to certain procedures. And you just uh, you go cash that out at the end of the day. It's a life. Which gets which always makes me think, why don't I just go back to dental school? Why don't I just go and do this for realsies and all that? But I think I like teaching a little bit more. But I could always be a dental I can always be a a dentist, uh, I can always be a professor and teach dentistry, but I don't think uh, I don't think those uh, people that go to dental school that come from money, I just can't connect with them. They're just not my type of people. I like being down here at the ground floor, being able to connect with uh, with the assistants from where I came from. I thought wisdom tooth removal was a tough process, but for the most part, as long as the teeth aren't coming out uh, coming out at an angle. The dentist popped those things out really quick. Oh yeah, definitely. It's just, hey, you numb it? You're numb? You feel that? Nah? Just go ahead and put an elevator in there. Twist, 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 twist. If it moves really good, then just grab a set of forceps, some 222s or some 17s or uh, 151 or 151s or anything like that. And then, uh, it comes. 
And even if it is a tough one, like, oh, well, we're just going to cut that in half, pull out the front half, or pull out the one half, pull out the other half, and bada bing, bada boom, throw some dry socket paste in there, or dry, throw some, um, some uh, gel foam, close them up, suture them up, and then on our way. It actually happens pretty quick. Once they're numb, it happens pretty quick, yeah. Our endo doc does root canals all day long, and that's what I mean about that is like, that's all he does is just comes in, does a root canal, moves over to the next room, root canal, root canal, root canal, root canal, and it's just crazy. And then if he has like his own little microscope that he does, brings in and just is able to get an easier look at it, but usually they're so skilled and tactful that they just done, just move on to the next one really quick. Uh, I did some extractions, anterior teeth, so it was easy peasy, just came right out. Oh yeah, what, okay, okay, you know, quiz question right here. What forcep did they use? And not saying that there's a wrong or right answer, but do you remember what forcep that that doctor asked for? Or did they just take a elevating, uh, did they just take a straight elevator to it and just kind of just really rock it out? Because I have an idea if they took out anterior teeth, and I'm going to write it on this paper. Aw, oh, damn, you beat me to it. Because I was going to say it's probably like an ash forcep. But yeah, bird beak, I'm pretty sure it's like a bird beak or an MD3 or an ash or, or, an, or an English. There's like 500 different names for that specific uh, forcep. Yeah, that's probably the best one to be able to just go and clamp onto that and just e -e 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 -e, pop it out. Shaped like an A is a uh, shaped as an A, Ash, I believe. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that's what uh, what it was. No doubt about that. I need to take out this mesial aspect of this tooth a little bit more. If I can freaking hold it, I would be able to have a little bit of an easier time. Yeah, extractions are nice. Pretty easy, patient's numb, and they're not trying to flail all over the place. They're pretty easy to have to deal with. I think that's what I'm gonna wanna do with this one. Let me go and get my wax set up, hopefully, but I'm just gonna go and do it like this instead. Okay, smoking. Grab some loose wax. Let's see. Oh, that burns like hell. It burns so good. Just just hot wax right over the finger. But thankfully, I'm so calloused up that it's not that bad. Wait for that sucker to... Wait for that sucker to firm up a little bit. Then we'll do some extra fancy stuff. You know what I'm missing? I need some water. Unless you're in pedo kids, I uh, like to make sure you know what, uh, that they are scared. Pedo is where the screamers are at. Oh yeah, I tell you. I can handle them for maybe like half a day, maybe a day at most, but I do not want to be around there all the time.
but truly, but truly the thing is, poor kids, it sucks that they, that we're so scary for the most part, because, um, it's just sad. It really is. What are you doing right now? Apart from eating this cookie, and also getting some water, um, I am making a denture. So I'm making a full denture for these uppers right here. If my camera would focus, maybe I have to tell it to focus. There it goes. Right now I'm making dentures for a patient. And so right now I have just a janky version of the uppers and this is going to be a try-in denture. They can kind of verify and be like, oh yeah, I like the length. I like the color. I like the gum height. And so that's what I'm doing for the upper. This one's going to be a full one where it replaces all the teeth on the top. For this other one that I have over here that I've been working on, this is more of a partial denture that's over here on the bottom. This partial denture is only replacing some teeth. <coughs> and in that case, like we see right there, we still have teeth in the making. We still have a molar over here. We have a couple of anterior teeth, a couple of front teeth, and this one canine over here. All the rest of it that's in pink and bright white is going to be replaced, hopefully, as I uh, continue to go and make my different pieces. So that's all I'm doing. Earlier, I made a bleaching tray or a night guard. Um, so that was earlier's concept. So if you want to go and if you ever want to go look at that, I have that earlier in the stream. Uh, but for the most part, it's just dental lab stuff. And if you don't go to dental school, and if you don't go to dental assisting school, but you still have the ache for being with teeth, become a dental lab technician. It's pretty neat. I mean, look. Look what I'm doing. I'm just making teeth, streaming, eating cookies every now and then. It's uh, not too bad of a deal. Yeah. It's not too bad. It really is the life, but in, in my daytime costume, I teach dental assisting. So I get to kind of live within a lot of these different dental lives and it's pretty good I enjoy it it allows me to do the things like this so I'm happy yep so I am a so I am so for me I am I know you sold me at cookies <laughs> so I am a registered dental assistant so I can work next to the dentist, do a lot of different duties that I want to, that uh, he allows me to do, and that I'm allowed to do in the state. So I can work in a dental office, do, working with patients directly. But where I live, for the state, uh, where I live as, oh yeah, I know, I figured you knew what you're saying. Uh, but for the other part that I like doing is dental laboratory stuff, which in some states does not require you to go to school. You just kind of have to be either on the job trained or just somehow have some training to learn what you're doing and the proper equipment and such. So I kind of do this on the side whenever I want to. And uh, I have fun with it. This isn't my primary thing that I do. So it's just whenever I need someone or whenever someone needs something from me, they'll just be like, hey, can you go make this for me? I'll assess it. I'll do it, and then from there we can kind of uh, make a deal at that point. Um, but just like uh, like we were talking about earlier, for me to do my job, I need to have decent impressions. And that means either the dental assistant took the impression, or the dentist took the impression. But most importantly, whoever signs off on that impression and sends it to me, that person's responsible for whatever I get here whether it looks great or it's garbage. Because I can have teeth like this where it's fairly uh, detailed. And I know blue against blue it doesn't want to freaking uh, focus for me. If I can have a fairly detailed impression with not too many issues or anything like that, that works out great. Or I can get something like this, which has no teeth. And it looks like everything's broken off. And actually, 
a lot of these teeth that are a lot of these little empty areas has broken off root tips of teeth that are going to be taken out before uh, before they give this denture to that patient. So this is kind of a in progress uh, procedure that's happening that the doctor's doing alongside with me. So that's also another case too. Uh, usually if I get the impression, I like pouring it in bluestone because I like the blue. But it really doesn't matter. It's the same exact stuff as the Yellowstone. I just, I just have the blue version. So for me, I know if I was to get an impression back or a pour up or a model and it's not blue or white, I know it's not from me and someone poured that up. So I know I can blame someone else. It's like, oh, I have Yellowstone model here. More than likely your assistants poured it up and it looked like garbage. It looked like crap, so I know who to blame for that pour up um, when it comes to me. Same thing for like just different styles of how we um, handle our things. I have my own signature that I put into these models to be able to tell, oh yeah, I'm responsible for that one. That was my bad. The basic structure of the uppers for the denture you're making based on how they fit with the lowers and how you know how they should be structured. Yeah. So in a lot of cases, and this is another case that I have here, you are going to have a device like this, and there's all a bunch of fancy ones. This one is called a articulator. Now this one is pretty basic for the most part. It's just an upper jaw, essentially, a lower jaw, and the ability for it to open and close. Now the big thing that comes for it that's important is when I get this articulator is, is it biting down correctly? Well, for the most part, unless it's a guess, I can for the most part guess what type of way that they bite together. But an important thing that I would always like to have is what's called a bite registration, something like this. It pretty much just looks like a sheet of just gum that's chewed up but I think this belongs to this person, if I, if I remember right. Yeah, if I have this bite registration for this person and I pour up these models and I have them bite together like they hopefully should, does this go to this person? Um, this one does not go to this person. Who does this go to? That goes to this set? This is another set where I made this person retainers. Yeah, this is, this is, that goes here. And so with this, now that I have uh, the correct bite registration for this model, um, now that I have a exact bite of how this person actually chews down on it, I can go and wrap this with a, um, with a rubber band so it keeps in this biting state. So this person bites in a class one occlusion. And I can go and set it onto one of these, I can go and set it onto one of these articulators, go and pour it up and everything. Every time I open close it will always return to that same similar bite and so that's how we would go about uh, figuring out their bite and once I know that their bite is like this just like I have right here I can go and base off of how I have them biting down or how the doctor wants them to bite down what their orientation should be how the teeth on the top should be occluding with the ones on the bottom now with this person, what they wanted me to do is they didn't want me to uh, make it where the top teeth sits in front of the bottom teeth at all, which is usually like our natural biting state. They want to make this person more what's called end to end, where the top teeth bite against the front teeth and just kind of um, meet the incisal edges or their ends to the top to the ends of the bottom. And so they want it to stick like that. And that's fine, I can make it like that. It looks stupid to me, but um, based on the clearance and the room that I have, I can go and align things as I would think and uh, as I would believe that they should be. And we take some things such as like, oh, usually in this case, the mesial buckle cusp of the top molar should be anterior or pronathic to the lowers mesial buckle cusp. And we can take all these different considerations into play. But for the most part, if your teeth fit in place and they bite correctly and they're not overly hitting in certain spots, um, 
It's not too difficult to actually get something like this set. A lot of anatomy though. A lot of anatomy when it comes to how should this be on there. Just take a quick break before I go back into this. Let's see. Natural way the teeth set me sitting here with an underbite where I can slide my upper lip between my teeth. Aw, oh, and that's and that's unfortunate when it comes to that. Just like you're mentioning, what you're what you're uh, describing in this case is that you have, and I'm not trying to make call you out or anything, but you have what's called a class three occlusion or an underbite, where your lower jaw sits a little bit in front of your upper jaw. And the thing that does suck about that is, as much as you would probably like to correct it with just braces and everything like that. A lot of times we're not able to go and pull the jaw back in that in that fashion. Uh, so some things that they may do for you in the future or potentially at whatever time is they may put a palatal expander, a little device that's going to go on the roof of your mouth that's going to push your arch from being a small arch to being a wider arch. And when that push happens to all those teeth and especially some in the front, you might get just you might get just enough drift. Let's see, I should do it on the other side. You might just get just enough drift where now you go end to end and everything's looking aligned with each other. And that's probably the best case scenario. The other option that you potentially have, uh, could have, is something that's called a Lefort, where they go and separate the maxillary, uh, the, the top jaw, and they go and reposition it where they would love like it to be put a couple of titanium screws, some titanium meshes in there to hold them in place. And then as you heal, then you'll have a nice natural class one occlusion or a natural overbite, which is usually what we want to have, have happen. But sometimes that just might be too much that we, that we would rather not have to go through. But I'll tell you, love that I actually have dental conversation happening in the chat too. It's uh, every now and then I, I will get the, the random dental person and such, but this is definitely a neat one. Dental chat is usually my thing. I think they tried the first process you explained when I was like 10, but since my jaw was still growing, it's back. Yeah, I can definitely see that um, being a uh, an attempt that they would have done where it's usually like a, um, what they call interceptive treatment. They see that it's happening and they're gonna try to prevent it from happening even more, but they try, that's the main thing is that hopefully they are able to get it, but if they're not, then it's just like, eh. We gave it our all. I remember having that expander and having to crank that thing every other night. Yep, that palatal expander has a key and you put that key in the hole like you probably remember and had to give that a nice little one turn, two turn or whatever they wanted you to do until, um, until they said, Oh, you're all done with it. All right. That went in, in fairly smooth as it comes to it. Let's go in.
Yeah, myself, I was in braces for about like five years, but definitely it wasn't a uh, too much of a jaw alignment issue. It was mainly just me hopping different dentists to different dentists all the time. So that was my issue on that one. I also had something that would set on my forehead and chin that would connect with the bands to something that would extend from the expander. It was a fun contraption to wear when I slept. Oh yeah, that uh, little hell-like sawed-like device uh, definitely is something else, and that um, depending on like what it was specifically made for, usually if it has the forehead and chin strap, that's meant to put pressure on those spots as they put bands to pull your upper jaw forward, hopefully, so that you can get a, a head start on resetting your alignment and everything like that. But the whole thing about that is the word hopefully, right? They tried as best as they could. <laughs> yeah, ain't that crazy. It's definitely a it's definitely a weird system. It seems almost like barbaric the different types of uh, the different types of uh, torture traps that they put us into just to just to get a nice smile. Oh, it's about to be oh, it's a, it is about to be midnight here for me in a second. Let's see what he said. I experienced a small period of time with a normal alignment of teeth. Oh, that's pretty rad. At least they, at least you got something out of it for as long as you were able to. Instead of it just being like, yeah, we tried everything, but it just didn't work. At least there was a, a little bit of success for a little bit of time. He said, my dad also has an underbite and they like broke his jaw, moved it where it needed, then wired his teeth shut. It didn't sound like a fun process. Yeah, like I was mentioning, uh, that process is called, I believe it's called a Lefort, L-E-F-O-R-T. If you ever wanted to look into surgeries and everything, check out a Lefort surgery. It is crazy as hell. But, uh, and, it is, uh, and it is also easily findable on YouTube. Uh, but it's definitely interesting uh, surgery. Also, it's known as double jaw surgery, but that's also just t doing surgery on the top, the maxillary, and the bottom, the mandibular. Uh, but if you just look for just any of them, they, they have a very neat, detailed uh, surgery on how those are done. Looks cool. You're not going to catch me getting, doing that for myself, but... Um, Definitely, I remember when I was a younger, they offered me that. They're like, hey, you want to get your jaw broken? And we can just reset everything. And being like 13, 14, my parents were like, uh, no, just put them in braces. Uh, hopefully that will work. And it did. It did enough, I should say. But apart from that, I am probably going to call it a night. And I thoroughly enjoyed having all of you people here and uh, getting that dental talk. I don't know what they're going to do for me when it's time, but I ain't looking forward to it. And you can just kind of keep it normal like you have it. Like I mentioned, it's, it, you've gotten used to it. It, if it doesn't if it doesn't affect the way that you sleep especially that you don't especially if it's not giving you like sleep apnea or breathing problems when you're sleeping a lot of times you can just kind of rock it and just kind of have it give you character and everything but 
If you do ever have to get it done, don't worry. Tons of people get it done all the time. But it is 12 o'clock for myself. I am going to call it a night. If you ever uh, hop on and you see my weirdo channel doing weirdo things, you can always come over, say hi, ask different questions and everything. I'm always around for being able to help. And it was uh, definitely, a, definitely a, a pleasure having you here with us. And from wherever you are at, hope you have a good evening, morning, or night. Cool. and turn all my stuff off before I go and call it. And do, do, do. What am I missing? I think I am all good here. Toss that. And let's go and call it night. I guess that's what that does. Okay.